All right. I am super excited, super honored to have Charles Phillips here on the Move Happy Movement podcast. Thank you so much for, for taking the time today. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Um, I always love to share with my audience, you know, how I connect with people and you and I, I want to say we connected on LinkedIn, though we have this actual real geographical connection where we grew up kind of in the same area. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, for those that don't know your background and whatnot, let's talk about beginning of Charles. What was Charles like as a little kid? Well, uh, I was born in Tacoma, Washington, and then spent my first three years up there, then uh, following my dad uh, as he moved along his career path, uh, we moved down to Portland for a year and then uh, settled all into California uh, from the time I was four and grew up in California, going mm -hmm. through preschool, through through college over there and uh, having different jobs post-college and eventually getting married. And finally, after 41 years in California, moving to North Carolina for a few years, when I uh, ended up going through a couple of hard hardships of uh, separation and, and divorce and losing my mom, but uh, those helped me decide to actually follow through on a lifelong goal I had of living in Latin America. So I'm now down in Costa Rica. I love that. I love that you, you channeled a lot of challenging things in your life to still pursue your dreams. And that's what this show is all about is inspiring people to do that. So let's talk a little bit more um about how how did you get connected to going to Costa Rica what was that first step for you do you remember well uh, uh so I was living in Charlotte and trying to figure out what to do and as I said it I had always wanted to live in Latin America so uh I looked at all the countries in Latin America and mm -hmm. uh, started pulling countries off the list, like for example, Venezuela or Cuba mm -hmm. are not particularly practical places uh, to live these days, especially for someone from the US. Okay. And yeah. so finally narrowed it down to Mexico and Costa Rica mm -hmm. and uh, I actually uh, knew a couple down here who I had met when they were young adults like myself living in Los Angeles. Oh, I wow. helped them figure out whether they should get married to each other or not. And uh, so I decided to move down and, and join them. I love that. A little love story too. You're a little matchmaker. That's awesome. <laughs> so small connection. Uh, a few years ago, my um, brother, I'm the, I'm the youngest. My brother actually got to go down to Costa Rica for music and some fun projects with, uh, with a, a guy that needed some help for, from him. Um, he shot some videos. It's gorgeous down there. W what are some of your favorite places or things to do when you're down there? Well, I love going for walks up where I am because mm -hmm. I'm actually in the uh, cloud rainforest about, I think it's about 6,000 feet up. Oh, wow. And, uh, so uh, in a small community where I half jokingly, it, this, this is serious, but people are shocked when I say this 90% of my neighbors are cows and, <laughs> uh, so they're, 
very rural area. Uh, yeah. Lots of plant life and animal life up here. And uh, Costa Rica is actually one of the best places to go if you're interested in wildlife as uh, we've got more birds here than we do in the U.S. west of the Mississippi. Oh, wow. In terms of bird species. Wow, I didn't know that. That's neat. So are birds your favorite animal? Um, actually, I'm, I'm more of a domestic animal person myself. Uh, but we have a couple of cats and a couple of dogs here, but then uh -huh. we also run an organic farm down here. And so Ooh. we've got uh, some sheep, some some goats, mm -hmm. uh, pigs, and recently we got a few uh, turkeys. Oh, fun. Yep. That is so neat. So organic farm. So then um, do y'all have flea markets down there? Like we have some in the US? Uh, there are in the big cities, but mm -hmm. uh, for us, our big thing on being organic is we use no chemicals whatsoever. So uh, you're, you're looking at the primary weed control system um, for, for a farm. Nice. So do y'all sell what you farm or is this for your own sustainability? Uh, at the moment, it's for our own sustainability. At right. times we have sold some of our what we've grown mm -hmm. and uh, we do from time to time uh, sell one of our animals. Uh, uh -huh. I got someone will approach us wanting to buy one of our, our pigs and we'll, we'll sell one of our pigs or one of our sheep. Mm -hmm. That's neat. That sounds like, like so much fun. Let's go back a little bit to, you had talked about, you know, going through, um, if you're okay with talking about a little bit of vulnerable stuff about going through divorce sure. and whatnot, um, let's unpack that a little bit. So when you got divorced, how soon after that point did you decide, I want to live in South America now? This is, this is the time for me to go. Well, uh, uh, so I got separated in the first part of 2018. Okay. Then in uh, just before Easter of 2019, uh, my mom passed away and wow. I'd, I'd been struggling with what, what to do. Uh, post marriage and so finally decided yeah. that since I'm not getting any younger, I may as well pursue my dream now while I'm able to. Yeah. Wow. That's a really quick amount of time for two really traumatic experiences to go through. So way to go, way to push forward and, and take action to really live your dreams. That's wow. That's incredible. I'm so sorry for your loss look at how it's transformed you though into being able to do you feel like um, that's it, it was it was challenging but <clears throat> yeah yeah i mean you know i think sometimes as hard as it is we need to go through a challenging time mm. to make us really reevaluate what it is that we want to do and mm. go ahead and, and do it. And uh, yeah. and one thing I've learned through the divorce process is that uh, you need to focus on your, yourself and uh, no one else can make you happy unless yep. you want to be happy. That's one thing I learned from from my marriages that 
there was nothing I could say or do to help my wife be happy and uh, trying everything I could to make her happy was, was hard on me. And so finally I said, we're both better off getting separated and, and divorced. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough decision to make. And um, I think we connected on that as well, you know, and just the, the, the key words that I heard you say, sometimes we have to go through tough things to really project us, move us forward. It's, I'm rephrasing it in my own way way to to yep. channel definitely way to channel that 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 challenging thing and also that's to me I see that as a form of kindness and compassion to her because you recognize that she wasn't happy and that you probably weren't happy either and hey let's let's change this situation if we can't get along if we're not you know uh the right energy or the right spiritual connection for us to amicably go our own ways and move forward in life. So are you guys um, still friends yep. or, or do you guys communicate at all or? Uh, we communicate here and there, but uh, very, very little at, at this point, especially now that I'm in a different country. Yeah. Yeah. And same for me. Yeah. I actually, I don't think I've had any communications at all, um, which was really tough for me. Um, did y'all have kids together or did she have children from a previous relationship? Uh, we adopted a child together. Oh, wow. So let's talk. Are you still connected to your, your child? Uh, yes. Uh, I, chat with him about weekly uh oh, that's so beautiful he's got some behavior issues yeah and uh, uh i i know mental health and mental health wellness is something that really resonates with you so yeah. uh, yeah. uh unfortunately in the u.s in general i mean there may be pockets where they they do this well but in general Mental health is not handled well in the U.S. And uh, so uh, he's got some serious behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. And so he's no longer living at home. He's living okay. in a facility, a group home. But uh, it, it's hard because I mean, what's the right, right answer when you have a child that you love dearly, but uh, is constantly getting in trouble, constantly getting violent. Uh, yeah. What What's the right solution? Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right in that uh, the U.S. and not just the U.S., but I, I found through just being that advocate for for mental health for people is there's there's not a lot of resources. Sure. Um, it's kind of last on the totem pole as far as taxes, you know, if, if we have tax breaks, tax cuts, it's the first thing that gets cut for state and federal funding and whatnot. It's a very complex issue. And thank you for sharing your heart with us and being vulnerable. Um, he's not the only one that's going through that. Uh, I feel like our system is, is not completely broken, but it definitely needs a lot of work a lot of help. So yeah, I feel like this conversation, yep. someone's listening to this conversation. As soon as we air it, they're listening to this and they're, and they're, they're talking to their people. We're, we're making a difference one conversation at a time. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that for those that might be, you know, connecting to your story now, maybe they've gone through divorce, maybe they're an adoptive parent or aspiring to be, uh, and they're, they're going through maybe a tough season right now. What, what are some maybe words of wisdom or advice that you could give them in keeping a positive mindset? Well, uh, I would say uh, for me as a person of faith, uh, I, I have 
a daily Bible devotional I, I go through every day. I also pray, uh, but then also a big thing I'd say to people is be, be authentic and be true to you, yourself and listen to what your gut is, is telling you. And uh, I mean, the only person you can guarantee to be happy is yourself. You, yep. uh, you can't make anyone else happy or, or satisfy anyone else unless they also want to be satisfied. And uh, so uh, yeah. for people in a rough relationship, I'd say, uh, 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 if you think it can be salvaged, uh, and if not, then be honest and end the relationship. Uh, tied into that is, is a, something I see all too often in, uh, in articles is don't bring in someone else a second relationship to help you be okay with your first relationship. If, if yeah. you're <laughs> intimate with someone, stay intimate with them if you can make the relationship work. Otherwise, let them know the relationship isn't working for you and yeah. that you are going to be pursuing another relationship. Have having them find out at some point that they have a significant other who also has a significant other is not a good fix. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, agree with that 100%. And thank you for that. I think, um, you know, what you said as far as keeping a positive mindset and, and choosing if you believe in faith and you have a faith to follow, um, which, you know, for, for everybody listening, that, that might be different, a little bit different for those that, um, you know, kind of lean into, uh, the Christian faith that you are also connected to, uh, do you mind sharing, you mentioned about, uh, like a daily reading, do you, is there a certain, um, scripture or a certain uh, maybe devotional booklet that you enjoy reading? Well, uh, what I enjoy doing is, uh, and they have this available uh, in book form and online, mm -hmm. uh, what's called the Bible in a year, although I actually do but in its Spanish version, La Biblia en un año, uh, where it breaks down the entire Bible so that every year you, you read every given section of the Bible once. And so at, at the end of the year, if you've been faithful to it, you have read the Bible cover to cover. That is so neat. I love that you said you read it in Spanish. Uh, for those that maybe don't speak Spanish or don't, you know, speak multiple languages, can we enlighten them a little bit? Tell me, tell me a little bit of the difference when you read in Spanish versus, versus when your mind is um, reading in English. What, what is that like for you? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's, Certain passages are challenging, and as uh, my Spanish has gotten to the level where, with some passages, I'll understand probably ninety-five percent of what mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reading. Mm -hmm. But then other passages, it'll be closer to sixty percent of what I'm, I'm reading in terms of comprehension. So, it it's challenging, but. Uh, I'd say uh, if you want to read it in your primary language, uh, that that certainly will help you grow. But then uh, 
if, if you have language skills such that it would be productive uh, reading it in Spanish or Japanese or some other language mm -hmm. that you have sufficient understanding of uh, gives you a dual benefit of increasing your language skills and increasing your bi biblical knowledge. Yeah, I think that's so fascinating. I feel like a lot of our um, Spanish listeners or, or bilingual listeners I will really appreciate that you're doing that um, just to you know hear that different perspective. Um, I remember uh, in college, I was in a, a gospel choir and we, we toured around, this was something outside of school, but we toured around to a couple different churches and outside events. And one time we went to the Spanish speaking church and we you know, joined in and performed for them. And I got to hear them uh, the pastor or the minister pray in Spanish. And then he translated in English because he knew that many of us only understood English. And it was like the most beautiful experience to hear both languages in the same space. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Second, um, second pillar of move happy is it's all about, you know, building community. And you've touched on a lot of that through your friends from LA and moving to another country and whatnot. Um, I'm sure that you've had other connections through community as well. For those that might be um, interested in getting connected to a community or, or maybe they're struggling, maybe they're a little more introverted and whatnot, what are some, some words of wisdom, some advice that you could give them as far as you know, starting, like taking action to get connected to other people? Well, uh, <clears throat> one thing I've done in the US uh, with different levels of success is that if you're in a new area or in an area where you've been a while but still don't have connections, uh, grab the phone book and uh, if you're a person of faith, look up churches. If, you're, if faith isn't your thing, then look up something else that interests you, whether that be uh, some sort of athletics or, or uh, bookstore or something and uh, find a book club you can join, a church you can join, uh, join the YMCA, find something that you can connect to and start meeting people. I love that. Great tips. Thank you for that. Uh, third pillar of Move Happy is all about movement, uh, doing things that you enjoy doing, of course, because um, that you know helps us with our mental health and all kinds of benefits. So what are some of your favorite uh, ways to move your body? Well, I mean, where I'm at, uh, my favorite thing is going, going for walks where uh, I love trying to do a 20 to 40 minute walk uh, daily. And then Saturdays being a weekend uh, day, I try to actually walk to a nearby restaurant I enjoy. Mm -hmm. where it takes me an hour each way to get to and from the restaurant. Ooh, that sounds like a fun destination. Uh, what kind of food do you eat usually when you go there? Um. Usually, uh, I will either go with a pasta dish, because pasta is one of, and Chinese food are two of my favorite food items. Uh, pasta is right. fairly easy to find down here. Mm -hmm. Chinese, not, not quite as much. Mm -hmm. But then I also like to enjoy local food like uh, gallo pinto, which basically you take leftover white rice, uh, leftover red or black beans, and uh, combine them with a little bit of onion, some garlic, maybe some onion, green onion, uh, pepper, that sort of thing. That sounds yummy. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us 
because uh, I know there's listeners that are wanting to connect with you and whatnot. What are you really excited about um, that we can promote here on the Move Happy Movement podcast? Well, uh, I'm down here, I do basically uh, wearing two hats. I've got a, a side gig here on LinkedIn uh, where I do coaching. I help mm-hmm. people take a look at what is it that they really want and how can they move forward towards pursuing that? And Mm -hmm. then uh, I also work with a nonprofit uh, association through uh, Association for Development through Education Aid, uh, which I shared their website address and, and uh, connected to that is Faithfully Go, where I also shared the website, their website with you as well. Uh, and we're trying to uh, be involved in the community, but then also uh, involved internationally. And right now we just started a building campaign. So if anyone's interested in donating we are a 501c3, which means your donations count as a tax write-off. Uh, we also welcome people to come down and, and help us build. Uh, as, as I love to say, a half jokingly, uh, we don't care whether you are an experienced construction person or whether uh, telling the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver might be uh, challenging for you. Uh, what, what, wherever you at on on construction knowledge, uh, if you're willing to spend a week down here, we would love to have you and uh, give you any training you might need to help us as as we build. As we've got uh, a total of fifteen buildings that we will have on our campus once our project is over and with. Awesome. 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 And I just uh, pulled up the link here. I believe it's the association for development through education. Is that the one you're wanting me to share the link? Uh, and as well as faithfully ego, uh, if Faithful. you could share uh, both of those. Okay, so I have uh, www.glocalade.org and uh, www.faithfullygo.org. So exactly. if you're listening, they can donate directly on those links to help um, with your projects. Yep. Awesome. And then, uh, uh, like I said, I, I have a side gig, and so I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook under Charles Phillips. Yeah, I highly recommend um, anyone listening or watching the show on the vlog, on YouTube, uh, you want to connect with him right away, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, Just personal testimonial was really trying to build out my sales last year during the pandemic. And, you know, with a limited budget, no sponsors, no external funding, uh, one conversation with you uh, through the DM messages. And you said, well, why don't you think about getting some internships going through your local colleges and universities? And that one conversation expanded my company from just me to three continents during a global pandemic. So I highly recommend people reach out to you. You have great value. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for our friendship. And I am so excited to continue to see you grow on online and uh, you know, through through these wonderful things that you're doing for humanity. So thank you so much. This has been really fun. I always love to close out. Thank you. Absolutely. And I, I, I also wanted to say it's been an, a pleasure watching you grow and expand over the past couple of years. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I feel like we've we connected right, like kind of when I got on LinkedIn, like right around 2019, somewhere around there. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. For 
for those that, you know, yeah. we've shared a lot already. You share, I should say, you shared a lot of uh, deep stuff today. For those that want to know you even better, um, what question would you like to share uh, that I didn't ask you today? Um, uh, I'd say the biggest thing and I'd love to share is uh, uh, I've touched on this before, but uh, be, be yourself and uh, use your own metrics of what does happiness mean? What does success mean? In, well, it's easy to uh, judge ourselves harshly where we look, look at, we can look at someone else and say, well, they're constantly sharing all these vacation photos or they're sharing how they're making 10 grand a week or living in a million dollar home and uh, yes all those things are, are nice but uh, uh, what ask yourself what is it that you want yeah great advice I love that thank you so much again this has been so fun Thank you.